Alright, so this is how to do this. Come up with imaging, um, <coughs> come up with all my imaging, um, most of what I go over is the fact that I'm wearing, you know, um, really is just leaning and looking at someone else's body parts and then, um, continuing to get sunlight, you know, which is pressure, you know, from the view of not looking at something and still the sun is bearing down on you and it actually feels good and gives you the nutrients that you need instead of not you know, because it seems to be proven that sunlight is actually um, the ability to see and that light is actually the ability to see so the sun must be really skilled at being able to see um, so um, anyway um, one thing I'm going to go over first is just how ugly I'd look if I was smart and how um, there's a lot of retarded people who um, basically are the only people who actually learned anything in school and it's basically just like is like what we say and they're like a living example of what they say and when you have like really like weird looking positions and like you know like strange looking stuff like yeah, some of the stuff that you know, you just look at this for a long time and you know, just anything that just looks weird or you know, doesn't look right. And you learn where the mistakes were and um just how deformed faces really look when they say something really smart and you realize all that the school was was just a place where, you know, this can't grow back because it taught you something that I didn't want to know. And um, <clears throat> another thing is that, uh, you know, learning it, um, there's a lot of exhausting, it seems. Um, but let's just go ahead and get started on it. Um, one thing that I also learned is that um, Things that I say when I'm irritated, you know, seem to be um, kind of expressive of my frustration. And I really didn't want language to be so annoying, but I think I'd have to be able to make myself really annoyed by the English that I would be saying or the other languages that I would be speaking and basically find a way to kind of use maybe something else besides or just use, you know, air pressure to kind of blast through what I'm thinking of. I was really thinking about using a visualization, you know, really make it custom. You know, maybe a visualization of uh, the, the pre-com and the um, triple negative, which is the math of it. And um, also the, um, well, some kind of white liquid. It's this little thing right here. But it was from a game, it's from uh, Super Mario RPG, you know, that monkey with a slave ball, and if you look at him upside down, his hands are actually gesturing something, and he's holding an upside down thing that looks like that, with the white liquid in it, which must be the linguistic language that I'm trying to speak about, you know, because it's, it's just, you know, full of so much me to learn, and that's what I would want to use in order to really speak is something like that, since... It seems that language only gets people to lead and get out of the way and it seems to be something that just puts something away and then puts it to sleep or kills it or eats it. And I just want there to be something else uh, in the language. So um, here we have some diagrams that um, are, these are just the bare minimum that you could use. Here we have um, some diagrams. This up here is basically, um, it's a visualization I got, it's basically how, it's not really a defined gesture, but it's somewhere, and it's fully defined, but there's basically some kind of rod that, it looks like a staple, sort of, you know, that basically has an up here, and then a second one here, and then a third one here, but Basically, it's just a third gesture of moving it up and down like this. You know, kind of like a swing set, you know. And 
<clears throat> why I drew that is because when you speak in a language, you know, there's always a um, looking left and looking right and kind of a glancing and a, you know, when you say like, blah, 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 blah. it has to have some kind of thing that, you know, kind of bounces and, you know, like ass jiggle does and just like belly and muscles and sitting and moving and standing and walking and, you know, pushing something and how it will kind of rock. You know, like if I push this wall, you know, I know how much extra, you know, kind of echo of my push in the memory, you know, I think that would be definitely something that could be used. Or couldn't, you know, if you want to just be, you know, try something else. But let's just say you can't, or can't. And, um, and then this next part here, we have uh, breasts, or balls, or ass, or whatever, belly. Or just whatever, you know, you know, just whatever it is, but it kind of falls and, you know, there's a lot of math to it. But it seems to be required, you know, and people are required, you know. We're still looking at the fact that everyone's dead and the language lived on and some aliens came to Earth and looked at it after we blew up Earth. And, um, you know, we didn't require people for the buildings to still stand with the letters because we hated our lives so much. And um, <clears throat> and then the next part here um, is a skull, and I'm going to go over three or four different things about that. And um, basically, the holes I'm looking at here is these, um, you know, kind of squarish looking uh, part of our, you know, uh, skull eye sockets here, the TVs we have. And then we have this little area here that has, you know, a little indention that has kind of two sides, sort of like the brain, and it has an area. And um, the way I look at it is that um, basically I could put my nutsack, you know, in each hole and then put my junk in here, kind of like a jock strap, and it would fit in there, you know, sort of like if I sat on it and it felt comfortable, like in a way to kind of culture myself. And kind of, um, you know, like a good position, you know, like a way to direct my body's flow of energy or touch. But using all of the things that do that as well. And um, then another thing is uh, the um, symmetry of, uh, I drew legs here. Um, I'm just going in order on how I drew it, but um, you can see how there's these two little spots here with his legs and then there's a bending over here, which and then there's a standing up here and it's kind of like a form where You know, I'm kind of like You know, sitting up like this You know, and then I'm bent over like this and then I'm up like this, you know, and just the difference between those three spots, because um, in those three spots, you know, um, it's sort of like in linguistics, it's kind of like having, man, if I just had one more, um, kind of like having three cups, you know, and um, it's like you could actually communicate only by just having three cups and one thing being in another cup, you know, sort of. But um, regardless, if you use all three of those postures at one time in a layer, where they overlap completely but are still there, it will cause an orgasm. And it's when someone's like, Ugh! you know, when they lean over, or if they're like, Ugh! you know, I mean, it's just the way that it comes out, you know, or it's just a standing one, you know. <clears throat> You know, but I think that's basically enough, you know, and it would always be able to do that. That also activates this, um, you know, the stem cell area here in the spine, where you can actually feel it once you activate that little area, how that math of that area works. Well, um, the reason why, I mean, it, this is just some of the idea, but it's basically just taking all of the dimensions of everything and putting them back together. It's kind of like, um, 
using as many things on themselves as I can to make, you know, like the shadow of like a sundial, for instance, you know, um, you know, the sun goes over it and then it has, you know, a shadow to give it dimension so that it would stand up and actually face the um, physical thing there. And, um, <clears throat> you know, another thing I thought of the third one was, uh, was like, it's like the uh, vagina or something. No, it was anal. Well, I mean, it could be vagina, but I, I just said anal. Like facing the other direction. That's why I got that little hole right there. You know, where it could be sitting the other direction. I got the legs on this side facing this way and this way. You know, so you're, you're kind of facing the other direction. You know, kind of like that. Instead of facing the other direction. You know. And um, it would be a little bit more comfortable for it. And then um, another physic we'd have to look at is uh, the axis of that. And how that correlates with the, um, I'm using the physic of when I had sex with this person, this girl or guy or whatever you want to call it. I don't care anymore because it has to be mad. But it, it had, uh, it was like I was fucking and I was on like a couch. And it just had like a really rickety bounciness like the couch was getting fucked. And it was like really bouncy and creaky and, you know, kind of like, you know, it was like really like metallic and it was just kind of like this you know and um anyway i just kind of drew this you know to kind of explain you know how language is kind of looked at it has bouncy shocks here and this is kind of the axis of maybe the jaw muscles or the jaw line it's probably like behind it in here in this jaw but actually kind of how it would be explained once again you know with something and it has some kind of round bounciness that goes around it there that sort of goes with it as bouncy it's kind of like shocks um that is one of the issues here and there's nothing put on the language and that's the one of the axles that we go off of um, when we speak um it's kind of just instead of us using tongues and going and just kissing and you know having sex only and not saying anything, which is what our conversation is going to be anyway, because, well, I guess I'll have to explain that too. And I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to make the video. I'm not going to make this happen if you don't, you know, want to make this with me. And then, um, there's also the fact that basically right now, you know, we have just, you know, like a bloody hand glove of a hand, you know, is what I'm speaking with right now. With these hands feelers, you know, that are obviously able to grope you, you know, and, you know, would actually, you know, naturally be able to touch you, you know, and touch a area. But the point of this is, is not to really use the you know, filling this area in that has been really archaic with use, you know, um, just because it's not really the same thing as being able to use, um, kind of like if you plugged a hose to a sprinkler and then it just started going and it started to actually, you know, you could move those shapes to make the language is how I'd rather have it rather than someone else said this and I haven't got to say anything busy, you know, because um, it was already said for me and it's not right for me or legal or not allowed for me in this small time frame somewhere margin where I can't say something new or say something and it be globally understood when I globally understood it. You know, so like I understood it for you and you understood it, you know, it's like learning language is actually hindering basically is what i'm saying here and that we're not looking at the physic of our body we're just looking at the physic of maybe some blood left over or some splatter from where we got killed for not knowing english and doing something wrong 
you know, and uh, mental health is not really going to help that, you know, um, killing yourself or just getting run over is basically what people who are speaking English in other languages now really are saying, you know, without being able to move on. And there shouldn't be other languages, you know, to a point. And I'll, I'll go on that on a different part, but it's just that every language is not def it's definitely not one word for each thing. It's not like, you know, the word, you know, calle means street. Calle does not mean street. You know, and there's there's no culture element to that, and there's a whole physic, and it's a whole instruction manual about something, and it's not just how to speak, and no one has actually covered that. You know, in every language, I mean, there's no way the word road means road, you know, in another, I mean, it's just, that's the thing, is that it, it can't, you know, interrupt, it can't interact with physics you know, or what you call metaphysics, you know, which is like the things I can touch and feel and see, um, at all, you know, um, I can't interrupt it, you know, you can't say, you can't teach someone like me, you can't teach me Spanish by saying, you know, something English is Spanish, you can't teach this stuff, yeah, it has to unfold everything so you can see all of the movement of it, you know, it's kind of like if, you're teaching someone something and, you know, this is how you learn something. It's like undoing this physic here and what would it take to map everything out? Like if that really was it, let's just say it could have been it. We could make it be it. That not seeing what's behind this finger here and then moving it up, you know, and revealing the rest of it, you know, uh, basically using math. But, um, okay, so that's a little bit too much, but let's just go ahead. Um, you know, just a little bit more uh, seriousness. Think of some direction. Um, here's a word. Pedododu. 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 This is just kind of a diagram I made, and it, it's just basically, you know, me trying to like succeed, but actually I wanted to fail. And um, this is just. Um, basically how Spanish people speak and other people speak well let's just say Spanish has a big clothesline that goes all the way across, across here or some kind of metal uh, rod that goes here so if you part your hair in the middle like Steve Irwin and then you know it's like a uh, line that goes across here and looking left and right would actually hurt that uh, clothesline <coughs> and someone's body would be kind of fucked up from looking at it um, there's also, you know, the line eyes where, you know, you go like, pero, you know, like, compre, compre dot, compre dot, compre dot, compre dot, you know, there's a looking, you know, left to right, you know, when, when you're, you know, and also, you know, the brain has to plop out, you know, a, uh, blob, you know, that comes out when they speak, you know, you say, pero, pero, you know, you also have to say, like, on this side, pero, pero, you know, and it's like, you know, it has to kind of go like that. And, um, <clears throat> you know, so that's some physics of just one language structure that is just the Spanish one. You could go over all of them and put them all together, but it's all definitely an instruction and it's all definitely a game. And you can easily do it yourself with your own language. And um, it's pretty easy to do, except for the fact that um, it wouldn't be difficult, probably. But anyway, um, it seems to, you know, that's just some of the problems and issues I'm having. Another thing here, probably partido, 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 partido. This is just another thing, is just talking, is just some diagram talking with that. I mean, you can just look at it and kind of figure it out, but um, it's just the eyes, you know, in fixed positions where one looks to the left, one looks to the right, one looks to the left, one looks to the right. So it's kind of all European language, basically. And then that the nostril has to be closed off one of them in order to speak, or the other one would have to be closed off in order for the other to speak. 
Um, it, it, it's just subtle things like that that are so numerous that it's plenty. Is that when you speak like this is actually a cue, you know, to understand, you know, perdido, you know, perdido, you know, perdido, 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 perdido. You know, and there's also an interaction there with my eyes. It's like somebody could touch it and move it. You know, and that's that's another thing is that those things have to be in place. Something has to make it move. You know, you can't just say that you make it move. Um, talking as a finger, loose, must use cuticle. Here's another issue, and it's just the fact of that. that you know. Um, that basically a finger like this, you know, that's gonna come and get you, you know, someone will have a hand like this, you know, or, you know, kind of like creeping up on you like this. And they'll be like, hee hee, I just went to the movie, want some popcorn, you know, sort of type of speech. And it looks like a head and looks like a worm sort of or something. Um, is a way that it gets hindered and, um, the reason for that is because you have to use the cuticle to uh, speak. And the cuticle basically, you know, grows over this area here, but it has to grow and it has to look right. You know, it can't cover up everything and have a strange, you know, movement gesture, you know. It has to be able to actually do everything in that area, like using every angle of every possible angle that it could be used in can it push everything out of its way basically is kind of what I mean here and that a cuticle and the way it stretches and the way it fills with muscles um, is basically how it is supposed to be um, if you don't then you'll be stuck in a part where you're like duh, 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 and you'll be stuck and that's how all those people are that um, are still speaking that language, still speaking English or any language. You can just look at Pee Wee Herman or any face that is like, bah, bah, bah. you know, or a goat, you know, it could be another thing, you know. Bah, bah. And, um, <clears throat> and then the next part here um, is basically the butt and how, you know, I was showing you how the kind of shoots out, but it has to be a full expulsion, you know, just like the metric uh, foot unit, the prosodic unit. Um, here we have a puff, you know, which is just a butt puff, you know, it's kind of like your butt, and if it could just go like, like, or just words come out, you know, and it has to have it where your butt's actually flexed completely you know, more than it would take, um, it, I mean, I guess I have to put down the actual, you know, formula for it, but it would basically be that you'd have to be able to spit out one bubble, you know, like one would have to be able to be done, and that would require, you know, having a little bit more muscle or more flex in that area, you know, than cushion, that would feel good, you know, um, and it would have to have a relaxed flex, you know, so it could actually, you know, be the same as your mouth, you know. You know. And that you could also play with it and go like, or but it, it shouldn't do like stuff that, you know, does that. It should actually say some words. That's what I would want, you know, in mind. In it, you know, I, I want to like work on it, but I'm not going to because I said work on it and now I just ate it you know um, must bounce off surface and flect to cinder there's also a lot of little itchy spots you know if um, you know your butt or your body you know doesn't get it in there your face can itch when things itch and they're really irritated you know but yeah, it must bounce off the surface and reflect to the cinder. You know, what is said has to be able to bounce off and then, you know, be counted in dimensions and make it back to what was heard. You know, has to be able to do that.
Um, that's another thing that um, this would do, you know, instead of the way that we've learned to do it by just watching other people. And, you know, actually, you know, with the whole network of people, I mean, you go to a classroom and just look at one feature of a person and be like, man, she looks hot. I'm just going to say she looks good, and then I'm just going to stare at her, and whatever she thinks of is fine, and I'll just stare right here and do that. It's basically what it's been since only one person in the world, really, needs to know each language. You know, because the people are there, you know, they're all around, and that one person came up with it, and it just everyone else is just kind of around it and just doing other things. That's the thing that I'd want to fix there, is that every single person could bounce off of each other instead of using one person to be the language and do the whole language. Because only one person wanted that whole language. I'd rather it be where everybody has their own language, you know. Um, here's another thing is that it will resemble biting. You know, um, you know, like they used to say like the last resort, you know, is to bite, but I, I think it would feel like biting. I think it would feel like the thoughts behind the biting, you know, definitely the feels behind the biting. And um, you know, probably the fouls behind the biting. You know, just how that feels, you know, using that mechanism and how everything else has used it. Um, how good would it feel to go, you know, instead of being someone who will not bite someone, to actually try to bite while you speak, I think would be probably what would be needed. Since smiling requires biting, you know, because when you're smiling, you know, you actually are snarling after you bit someone. And if not, then someone else bit someone else. And, you know, it needs to have that to where you can actually bite and eat the person or, you know, kind of let them know you're there with your teeth. And it's like dogs, you know, can like bite each other and fight a little bit and snarl. And they just said a lot more, you know, than, you know, someone who can't communicate, you know. And when they smile, dogs also can smile. You know, when they meet each other, and it looks just like a snarl, you know, but it's just not where they turn and bite you. And, but you don't want it to be where when someone talks that it's, you know, it's like no feedback, feedback. You know, it's like this isn't, you know, responding, and I responded. You know, that is what uh, this type of thing causes when there's learning in here, when you can't just come up with your own, when you have to go to school, when you have to have parents teach you something. We could have all had our own languages, or we could have had, <clears throat> and, um, and then the next part, you know, is that these little annoying, you know, things come out all the time and it really irritates, but that's what has to come out at some point and it has to feel right. Not putting away or puking or losing something, things taken out of the mouth resemble this is just kind of how, you know, it's sort of been with uh, languages. You know, you eat something and then you put it up and, you know, you pick a few things you like and then you just kind of put them over there on the table, you know. It's like, well, I like cheesecake, so maybe I'll know this whole sentence, you know, type of thing. Or, you know, maybe I like, you know, you know, get rid have a glass of water, but, you know, lost it and now I can speak. You know, has to be able to probably also, you know, kind of take these things and be able to put them away, you know, so you can kind of drop, them, I, I don't know, like drop them and preoccupy while you're talking instead of have it where you don't have your own items and you forget something in order to think, in order to be smart, you know, or puking, you know, um, could also be like that. Uh, okay, and then here we have another thing. Um, I don't know if this is really right or wrong. But here's the first way I went: is uh, fueled by the thought, like, can you fill your own nipples with Kool Aid, and what, what contracts them? This is just a thought I had, you know, but I think it would be really useful to kind of use as a stretch, you know, as a thought. Um, being able to fill up these nipples with something, you know, I think it would be really useful. You know, instead of it just be where the milk comes out of the nipple, you know. And uh, also, they have to realize that your nipples do breathe. And, um, you know, that's why they, you know, do all the stuff that they do every day. And um, it uses other physics. It's smaller, darker matter and larger, you know, probably brighter matter or something. I don't know. 
But regardless, you know, um, the way that it feels when they do feel like they are breathing and sucking something in and it fills it up is basically how the language is supposed to be. It's supposed to fill it up, it's supposed to fill up anything that feels like that, you know, um, and not really like increase its size and girth, but just to put the information in it. Um, and just using, you know, the facts that we have pores and other, you know, things that can basically be nipples that can take in the information. Um, then the next part is um, skipping predicted protocol that is lost and goes the wrong way or the extra early right way wrong. You know, it's like when someone's like, you know, so, you know, that's three meters, so we'll put that there, you know, three. And then, you know, someone says, well, it'll be two meters. So, they'll, you know, and something else is right that was three meters. And then they're like, oh, well, you know, so three meters. And they're like, no, it's two meters. You know, or one, no, they'll be like, no, it's one meter. Or no, it's two meters. And they'll just be obvious about it. And they'll be like, oh, three, three, you know, meters of a distance or whatever. And um, it's kind of... Um, you know, being able to actually find something that would fit in that area instead of finding something that wouldn't fit in the area as an example of what to be. You know, it's kind of like, kind of a reverse engineering love life and how you have to have something wrong with you. Reverse engineering the fact that we have breaks where we have to really be broken and um, getting rid of the facts where, you know, we have to have things wrong with us in order to get with someone, in order to destroy ourselves. And it's basically, you know, using a different form, you know, because just being letters and things that has just been around for that long, it really does make me feel like I have no purpose at all and that, um, that I basically just want to kill myself if I don't already. Um, that's kind of, um, where that would have to be expressed and there's no other way to express it, um, except for to basically have something else to express there, you know. Um, how long English is going to be around is a good reference for how much I'd like to kill English. Or at least, you know, defeat all other languages. That's my, you know, it's your goal inside, isn't it, Michael? You know, and then here we have, you know, I did and used, and how it would skip over, you know, the two things. You know, it's kind of what I was saying about, you know, just the measurements and how it would find something that doesn't fit. And it would, you know, see a couple of tries, and then it would find the final try and use it. You know, I thought it would be a good idea. Ugh. But, you know, if it follows an English protocol and, you know, doesn't use another protocol, then it might find something else that bothers us, but I think that's good enough. Or bad enough. And um, then here we have a strafe and uh, basically a chicken head. And, or... Um, how this is, is that when you're facing somebody, you know, and you're like, you know, like you want to fight somebody, you have to realize how this physic is, and how the head can get stuck like this, and, you know, getting punched isn't going to help, you know, and that it is a center point, and when a chicken, you know, is moved, it stays in one spot, and when you face a person, you stay in one spot too, and actually both of your heads come in at one spot and are like this when they are talking to each other when you're talking to a person it is like that so you have to figure out a way to let it know that the rest of these movements over here that are going left and right are actually you know um basically both people talking being able to talk to each other and um that would basically fix that error there um and it's a strafe it's like you have to be able to go sideways to really talk, you know. So once our head is in that position, we have to kind of circle around what is there, you know, in order to, you know, um, kind of talk there. And I know like a bajillion people have said this, you know. And then, um, you know, using the strafe, um, we also have um, the wrong strafe immobilized if he uses the... Uh, and then we have uh, going forward must be filling up center or using it rather than really going forward or back bank slide with a check in it. It's kind of like looking at a bank slot, you know, with a check in it, how it can go through the chute and how that could kind of, uh, kind of have to do with the neck and the area in the center, you know, of this round area that is uh, in space here. 
you know, with the social space where I'm facing a person. Um, basically saying that I, I wouldn't really be able to, you know, go forward, you know, or do this type of shit. Or, you know, kind of poke up in a person or anything. You know, it's just saying that it would be basically in one spot and we would just have to kind of work with that area somehow, maybe. And, um... I, I just don't think there's really much explanation needed except for the fact that, you know, the wrong strafe would basically describe what I've said. Um, it, it's just the math of this here and how it kind of correlates with the uh, tripod stance that I did earlier with the orgasm in it and how it worked, but something that would be this irregular, sort of like from the game um, Mother 3 on the uh, Game Boy Advance, how everything it has a little slit in the eye and it you know, has the uh, pig army and everything, and the way that that is, is like this little slip of the wrong strafe. And you can see how, you know, that is not really a perfect, you know, standing up, you know, and then, you know, leaning forwards and, you know, then a leaning back, you know, to um, kind of resemble the three stances of, you know, up and forwards and then back, you know, and how those all three um, are mating techniques like birds do it, lizards do it, you know, a lot of different animals do that and humans do that and when you have all those three little positions um, you know, a lot of things happen you know with uh, a third you know evenly split and um, how there has to be a variable of a person actually there in order for it to actually be something and if it's just words and letters and stuff that doesn't make any sense and you know it's just the stuff there and not the actual person then it would just be the math of it and just be, you know, basically what this stuff looks like to me. It looks itchy and annoying. And that um, it would basically be me falling over. Um, you learn that, you know, you, you, and then the next part, you know, you fall over and everything. And also when learning, you know, there's a lot of people who throw up, you know, in the middle of speech. And it's most of the baby recordings you know, of our lives, but in order to even speak English and other languages, um, there's a lot of throwing up and other things if language is supposed to be not a universal language, but actually the language, you know, instead of it's set to where it's just for the buildings to use instead of people. You know, like, for example, you know, a refrigerator is worth more than me, you know, is something that I do not agree with. You know, because I feel like I have something to say. And I think that, you know, me coming up with, you know, like Frigid Air, for example, or Electrolux or whatever it would be called as a refrigerator, you know, or Whirlpool or whatever, it feels like that actually created itself and it was just based on the fact that I am not it. And um, that would mean that I would actually need an actual language instead of one that is just based on, you know, concrete evidence. You know, which the concrete is which worth more than me because I don't work at a concrete place, for example. So, um, these have to also have like 100% full references. Uh, we're going to base it on um, that image that I drew and the uh, image to sound unbelievable. The one that says, you're impossible, I don't like computers. And it's just how letters, symbols, signs must just say what is needed but not repeat each other but can. Not to taught extent but to exploring and already knowing extent it's like if you could just go to a Japanese like if it just an example like if I could just go to Japan or go to China and look at all the signs and I'm like wow you know that looks like something that looks like something and then I know what it is and then I can continue you know um, would be nice you know but right now it's basically the fact that a throat you know needs a little bit of cum in it and that that would be food that would be translated to probably yogurt and someone throwing up as well as a one-year-old baby throwing up and not remembering that little bit of where it threw up or pooped and that someone else you know put it to sleep while it was doing that and had sex with it and um you know was completely oblivious and probably said that you know a bag of concrete really was worth more you know than it knowing its own language because it had its own label on it. 
And, um, <clears throat> you know, that's something that I don't like. And I'd rather just have, you know, is what I sound like to you. You know, I realize if I do turn on, you know, this little thing and I'm like, you know, that seems to be all that you will understand forever. And you know, that seems to be where I die. You know, you know, just a little bit slower. You know, I mean, just the way that is, is it needs to be something else said besides that. It seems also that all language has done so far is said that. Um, it seems to just say that what I say is gibberish and is just for someone to take advantage of me. And obviously the person would probably be just a reflection of other objects and things, you know, which are obviously worth more than me if I was not there before I was there uh, at the time, which I disagree you know with I guess but uh, just the gibberish and looking at things coming out and physics of other people and usually you know butts titties ass muscles um, you know definition forms mouth you know physics around it too are all you know kind of what it seems to be saying you know um, as far as linguistics, you know, without, you know, knowing how each one of these things works, which, I don't know. So there's a little bit more of a mess for you if I, and, you know, you'd have to, you know, literally crap yourself and pee all over the place, you know, if you really were, you know, a, um, person, because you have to use every single person's contour, you know, you have to use every single person, you know, every single communicating person, you know. Can you pee with your eyes? You know, can you pee with your ears? There's, I mean, there's a lot of questions, you know. Using references for movies and countries is useless, really. Like parts of words, or this feels like this in English, so let's still speak English and try to relate. And it's just using, like, the word play of everything, and I don't think that it would really be proper to use it. Um, just because, you know, the word play element um, would kind of be weak to use English to speak another language. Um, and the way that we have remembered is absolutely useless. You know, um, you know, to think of abs when there's absolutely, you know, or to think, you know, I mean, it's just not realistic at all. I mean, no one ever thinks of what it is, you know, is what it is. And, um, here is what my example was, you know. You know, like, it's like, I, I know English, so I'll just speak English and then I'll learn this new language. Is not how, you know, you actually want to be alive, you know, and not kill yourself, you know, is what I'm going to tell you. You know, instead of kill yourself, you know, is basically what I'm saying here. Because you had to fight against learning English when you were a baby. And you're still fighting against it now. And it's like, if you could have just said what you wanted to say, which made more sense and actually communicated much more it would have been much better and it would not have been the same thing you, you know things change that much you know and things change to other things that much and to have things be this little tiny thing when things can look like other things things can change to other things and not be the same exact looking thing every time you know this is like for people I mean these languages that we have and the ways that we learn or for people who are AFK, people who aren't paying attention and have absolutely no idea what they're looking at. You know, just automatically move and don't look at it, you know. I'm someone who is facing that. You know, I'm someone who don't want to be AFK and I want to actually be in the moment. I want to be inside of the moment, you know. <clears throat> so here's what I said. Hot spot, not cold, feels Spanish is an example. So use a word like Russian cold compared to American distance wise is a question, you know, and I thought that, you know, since I'm in America, you know, and I'm thinking about language, maybe I think of waves, and then I would think that um, that would be, you know, a hot spot in the water, because you know, there's always like a cold spot or warm spot in the water. So I could go to the hot spot in the water or warm spot speaking my English. 
And then I could see how spot sounds like the word Spanish, you know, and I could see the childhood memory all over again that I don't want in my language. I'm finished with it. I want to be from a different place. I want to go to a different place. I don't want trash to be what I'm saying. And then I said Russian, you know, because, you know, Russian is not America, but it's not Spain or not South America. So it would be, or not Asia. So it would be a different place rather than other place and just the way that that works you know it's just really irritating you know I mean cold compared to Russian distance wise you know not cold hot spot not cold it's just it, it just doesn't make any sense but that's what I would be saying probably if I am speaking English I'd probably just have some kind of stupid thing like that just blah, 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 you know and then that's it you know just a little bit of like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or you know and that's about it you know and it, it just doesn't do anything else and it's just really impressive <clears throat> and um then we have you know vacuum clothes and um I put three highs in there I don't know why and it's basically just kind of like you know maybe we could try using this or not but it's like a marquee and how, you know, something could be said and then it comes like kind of a distance thing, like it'll come up close and then go out. I thought it would kind of be useful, but I also thought maybe like, no, like don't use it. Um, but a marquee, you know, it's kind of like a scrolling thing and you, you know, you can kind of put other stuff in the scrolling of the motion of what's said and then it would come up and be some other data. And that was an idea that I thought would work, you know, and kind of using like pressure and kind of like, <laughs> you know, a lot of like piled up like other memes based on other languages I thought would actually be enough, but you wouldn't want to use other languages to do it. You'd have to use physics to do it. And that would just be to get rid of the uh, language element because these words are so overused. You might as well be taking the person who made it and, like, still beating the crap out of them, you know. And, I mean, when there's punching to learn, you know, and there's literal hurting with the punching, and it doesn't hurt, and it does, you know, that's the type of thing that this stuff would fix is the fact that, um, you know, overkill is a big problem. And um, I think that, you know, a lot of these things that we see now, anything that we can be tired of, obviously is overkill and um it's kind of like uh the poop emote and when someone's hunched over like this and it's like boop you know and just how and he's like american Beep. you know just that irritation right there it's like it's useless stuff. It's like if you taught somebody to guard their house and, you know, if they had a gun but they didn't, you know, they could just take a poop, you know, or just make a noise, you know, and just kind of lean over and fart, you know, and it would, you know, save the day or maybe shoot somebody or take a poop. You know, just useless stuff like that has nothing to do with linguistics, you know. Here's another thing that bothers me. You know, comfort ham zone. And uh, it's just that uh, ham seems to be the only thing that um, can be used with the. Uh, this is like the rest of the stupid freaking piece of paper. And it's just that, you know, ham in the circle, and then there's the comfort zone around it, and it seems, you know, not being able to get out of that comfort zone, you know, with the ham. You know, it's like a dwarf planet made of ham, atmosphere being utter crumb. And that the speech will cause enlarged and too big gulp or swallow and a heart attack. You know, it's just like a bunch of people sitting around eating ham and turkey and eating a bunch of food. It's always ham, 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 ham. You know, ham, 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 ham. And it gets really irritating, you know, to even be ham. And um, it's annoying. And um, it seems like every single word so far in any language can only go to ham, the planet made of ham. 
and stay in it. It's like the atmosphere around it actually keeps it inside. You know, and I mean, can you beat it? I mean, are you just a little titty that's going to give up to my hand? You know, <clears throat> you know, no matter what sex you are. You know, I mean, can you beat that? You know, if that's what you feel like inside is any object, you know, in a room or something, you know, besides a person, you know, can you beat it? Can you beat that heart attack and big swallow? Can you beat that extra work at work? And, you know, the fact that I work my ass, I work really hard, you know, and then, you know, it's like that extra work that we all put in, you know, is definitely noticed. Crummy slip ups and words that put us to sleep. And I guess you could say the word getaway, um, words that cripple and flatter exhaust and cause too much or too little are all things that need to be addressed here with coming up with a, you know, world language, um, you know, or just, uh, you know, the way that's supposed to come out, and not the word naturally, but that's not it, it has to do with gnats eating you, because you're a maggot and want to do an army, just that kind of stuff too, like, I seriously don't want to just spend the rest of my life saying stuff that Eminem says, you know, and just saying, you know, army, maggot, you know, just... The way that things use rhymes and, you know, things like that are really irritating. And it seems that it is completely like beating a dead horse. There's nothing to do with it. You know, there's nothing to do with it. And, um, you know, being completely flattered or completely crippled, you know, is just not how I want to feel, you know. And, um, you know, just to, you know, hide something and... You know, just to kind of, not like that, you know, I mean, even, you know, I mean, that, you know, you know flattery is just like, oh, it's like something just isn't, you know, what it should be. And just that the slip ups, you know, if someone's heel, it's like if someone walked and they're just like, oh, 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 you know, and it's just like a, a little, I guess, like a really soft feeling, you know, that is just crumbly and it's like something is like bigger than your life and just completely has ruined you and just to pull it out of just that little arrow's direction, you know, and just how, you know, that is. And um, I also had a word to go with all this and it was, uh, or something like that. Probably you need Ben Drill. You know, something that anyone would say to you. You know, and I mean it, I mean, and just to have to keep coming up with all these silly, you know, like, <laughs> you know, man, you know, all this Ben Drill, and, you know, somebody can just easily have sex with, you know, somebody, you know, and got drilled because they needed to pray to get their medicine, you know. It's just not fun to use three little simple references to say something and using this form of language would actually keep it all together so it would basically float, it's supposed to flow right through these stem cells right here, you know, of the neck where the adrenaline comes through and the stem cell replenishes, you know, but I, I just think that using words and things is not really good enough and we'd have to use actual physics and other things that come out and be said. And not something that would just be in the little comfort ham zone, you know, that we call it. But, I mean, maybe, you know, we could try and see what that does, too. <clears throat> you know, since it does kind of keep you in one spot if you study space and the physics of it. I just didn't think that that would be it. But, I mean, you know, it could be something to try. <clears throat> Failure is to see. Alright, and then um, finding familiar English in it is too easy, so definitely not learn similarity, and that's just from, you know, looking at other people, and I mean, you only have, you know, so many people you could have talked to or looked at, and it's just so repetitive that the same thing pops up, and it's the same error, and it's like, just, you know, it, it just doesn't make any sense, and it, it doesn't really feel right, you know, to be in the exact same spot over and over and over, like if there was a ripple that was just the same ripple forever and didn't do anything and couldn't have a person there is useless, you know, is what I mean by the comfort ham zone.
it's just that, you know, there has to be a person that is, you know, able to go through there and look at it, you know, instead of something just be, you know, exact same thing. Not be able to do what we wanted to do, which is actually travel, something spoken. Um, you know, I'd want to be able to travel. I, mean, I wouldn't want to be stuck in one spot or just be an example or just a piece of a picture, you know, probably on a wall or, you know, maybe just, you know, an item, you know, that did something good, you know, like someone invents some paint and the paint, you know, has the name of the brand and it goes to a place and it does what it does. Um, it's just not how I would like to be. I'd rather be, you know, not omnipotent, you know, is what I mean. And I'd rather be just potent, you know, instead of just... Yeah, I mean, just all of this type of stuff right here. I have all these good points, but I could have said it a different way, you know, at least. All languages with this repetition have no difficulty because more than one person knows it, thus flattered, is defeated in an impossible falling. And, you know, I talked about that. And um, there's also, you know, a little bit more of the diagram here. And, I mean, I know that no one will ever get this accomplished. Um, but if it was accomplished, yeah, it would be nice. And, uh, <clears throat> anyway, I uh, also have the word, it's like the high box face, and it's just, uh, the result, you know, of, you know, still being in comfort ham zone, probably, is, um, or falling out of it, you know, and still trying to get something right, or, I don't know, maybe just trying to get something wrong you know, is being in the ha box, and it's like, when your face is a box, it's like when someone buys one of those cubes, or they buy a, uh, it's like a RV, you know, the PT Cruisers, <clears throat> and, you know, you have, like, red cheeks, red cheeks, or purple cheeks, purple cheeks, and then your mouth is like, you're like, Chirp, 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 or just ha, oh, oh, box, box, I'm speaking English, I'm speaking English, this is what it sounds like, box, 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 you know, and you can't do anything else, and it, it's just really limiting, and that's what it is like, you know, it's like being, you know, the mother from Malcolm in the Mood, you know, it's what it's like, and just on the show part, you know, it's just, just how, you know, the lips could be expanded upon, you know, not really be anything else. And how it can fall and how, you know, the physics of the falling are and how, you know, that is definitely, you know, something that could be, like, really difficult to continue, especially when the falling is actually, you know, kind of forced there and there would be no recovery from it, you know. And um, then we have, you know, so far all known languages kill you because they're all painful, irregular stretches, not man-made. And here's the example that I'm going to give you. It says, uh, bend knee past allowed limit in classroom simulated if snapped knee learning with pain better than ruining the word by not breaking it by itching and swining coming up with something else then basically what i mean is that learning a word you know such as you know they have this list of words in school i just went back to school and i just simulated it and i thought about it over and over and over in physics that um if i was in a classroom that i was in and sat back down in the same place on the same day that I could literally bend my knee back and break it using my own muscles. And I thought maybe being 13 I could do it, but I could actually do it in kindergarten. And um, <clears throat> basically that I could break my knee by, you know, like, it can only go about this far, right? But I'm talking about breaking it and bending my knee up this far. This, up past it, past the limit, you know, like past here, and up to here is normal when you learn an English word or any other language word. And it's simply because you can risk your life for a cause that it's a just and good thing. And that the language will last longer than you. Which may give you hope and opportunity. So I'm saying that I could bend my knee back and break it. And learn a, a word in English, you know, such as the word any word that it would be you know I could probably say language you know or I don't know dishwasher 
you know, or conjugal, I guess it could be another word, or just, you know, whatever. <coughs> you know, movement, that is another word. And, um, anyway, you know, um, I would, it would also cause itching, you know, if I didn't. And I think that's really the point there, is that um, the language that we'd come up with, the way to speak, that would not be teaching someone something else, and it would be universally understandable, instead of something that I cannot understand, because I am not, you know, something that is not, I'm not someone who is not here. You know, and I'm not here to just be, you know, the prolonging life of something that can be there, such as Roman buildings, you know, with Roman numerals and print, you know, that is actually stronger than me. You know, I don't believe that letters should be what I am. I don't believe that typing is who I am, and I also don't believe that the letters themselves will ever represent me. You know, and even though I can close my eyes or wide or open or close and I can print things out and I can look at words that I say now, I learned that that's not going to help me because <laughs> it's a challenge. You know, there's no way that I'm going to be able to just ever use letters in order to do this stuff anymore. It's it's because I'm already dead here. So it would have to be able to, you know, not have to bend my knee back and break it. You know, and it would have to actually support my legs, you know, and it'd have to be something kind of like a dance or something, you know, or something that feels comfortable and keeps me together instead of passing my momentum to a dead area, which is just items and objects and things, probably such as computers or anything that an animal can get scared of, you know, or anything that is just impossible and like not really something that you would want to feel. You know, something that, you know, basically I have explained is other things and metaphors and things, you know, that are not actually things, you know, that can actually be used much more, you know, and not to, it's just overkill, man. You know, I said has to turn us on and use every other person, place, and thing, Myth mythical as well as man mandatory, not hide components of mythical 600 things of people and places that represent a piece of my skin and much greater than other things there are and all have many different features has the open mouth and feel it and this is just basically saying you know I have freckles and small details on my face and I believe that just looking at them um, I could get lost in a lot of stories and um, when people look at me or I look at them or I, you know probably not other things you know but just other people and you know things I can talk to is another point and that, you know, there really are little things that you can talk to that are something with, you know, features and definitions of them. I think names are not going to be useful in this language. You know, when I look at myself, you know, I don't see, you know, a name anywhere. I don't see, if I get rid of print and I get rid of this language, I don't have a name anymore. I have what is left, you know, I have the definitions of me instead of something else. So maybe I don't have the definition. Maybe it's called something else by then, since we have being deaf and finished. But that has to be said. You know, you have to say that type of stuff. You know, it's like, this is my urgency. You know, here's how much I've had it up to, and here's how much I can't take it, or can. You know, and it's going to come in there. It's going to talk, it's going to flex, it's gonna say it. You know, and that is what needs to be expressed much more fluently. And I'd like help being able to do it. I'd like it to actually be done so we don't have to use English to do it. But, you know, it is required. I mean, just speaking about something and saying something is what it is, you know. But you don't want language to be where I'm talking and it sounds like... And it says, oh, you just said a bunch of gibberish about nothing and... Uh, that I didn't like it. Or you say something and it says, what I said was this you know, is not what the language should have at all. You know, try that as a challenge. That, that's going to be really difficult. And um, and then I came up with another thing, and it was like, you know, equation. It was like rock candy, pop coffee, and pop copy. And it was just using some ideas, you know, these drawings. And, you know, rock candy is something that I've been looking at for a long time. Is, um, it's uh, art. This dude draws his name is rock candy. 
And then this other thing is uh, pop coffee, which just has to do with it. I thought rock coffee would be it. And then the next one is uh, pop copy is the Dave Chappelle episode. And he's talking about you know, here at Pop Copy, and um, I thought that maybe it would kind of explain something. Um, and it's just that you know, um, it's kind of like looking at George Bush's lips, and just how he could like kind of mutter like, <laughs> you know, and his lips are shaped a certain way. Mine are shaped in a more juicier way, and it's like if I did the same speech as him, it would be awkward. And it would be the fact that he has no food under his fingernails to speak with. You know, and that it's completely depleted and it's out of it on both sides. It's like both of his thumbs have absolutely nothing to eat with because of his lips. They're not juicy enough. And because of that, you know, they wouldn't be able to actually fill his mouth with anything. So he would look very stupid. You know, or very like double in empty, you know. And that's where, like, lips like that would have to be opened and filled, you know. And, um, it's just that the, the receiving orifices of uh, speech and everything have to kind of be open, but it has to be, like, a closed open. You know, like, something is open, something is closed, and then how much I can handle, you know, would probably be it, you know. Um... <clears throat> But maybe, maybe not like in English, you know, just finding a thing that would, you know, kind of confuse me, you know, I mean, just everything has so many different metaphors already that it is just so irritating, you know, that th this isn't done yet, you know, that this language, I mean, everyone has their own way of interpreting what is said, yet it is not, you know, it is very, um, kind of still, you know. Like I said with the uh, chicken thing, you know, um, not pry, sneak open, close back, do nothing, which learnt, Lent language does. And I said Lent because, you know, it takes leaning and looking at something or, you know, like not looking at someone and someone else, like not looking at that person in order to keep this form of knowledge together. It's like, so we don't see what's there. We'll just use what we don't see to know what's not there is there and that we aren't there because something that's not there you know is there but we are not there you know is what that is and it basically causes this and this is something we have to learn now humans um is that you know it causes people to pry and sneak open and close back and do nothing with the mouth you know like if i was completely unconscious my mouth was closed and i needed to be fed or at least fed one you know, just a little bit of knowing in my mouth, you know, so it's not dry throated, you know, so it knows that, you know, saliva wants to come through it and actually coat it so I know that it's coming out. So I can swallow or maybe want some water, you know, maybe a person to speak. You know, um, that type of hitting on people too is useless, you know, when you say, you know, maybe say something, no one's there, you know, type of thing. That's because it's in English and in other languages. And it all does the same thing. It's something that can't work. It's just like social media doesn't work. And that's why. Because there has to be an actual thing to talk to. You can't have nothing to talk to in a double negative or a one positive. Or whatever you want to say. I mean, we're going I mean, you could use physics instead of math. But I mean using reality here, I'd probably say metaphysics instead of math. Since things become other things later, and I've never ever seen, you know, something actually you know, be something. Physics. I don't I don't know what physics is. But when, you know, someone has those perverted moments where, you know, someone will sneak, they think that a, a period is different than masturbation or that masturbation is different than a period. They're both the exact same and it both feels exactly the same. And there is absolutely, you know, no difference at all. I mean, there, there is time constraints and stuff different. No, there's nothing different about it. All is the same thing. But the thing about the same thing there, you know, is that when, you know, someone goes and checks something and there's nothing there and then they come back and they realize that they need to go back and check and see how good that feels to go back and check and go back and check and go back and check, and back and check you know, it doesn't do any good. And, um... 
you know, um, it's just basically instead of having, you know, nothing there, you know, actually there would be something that would be in the room that would be checked. Um, you know, usually it's supposed to be, you know, maybe something in the room that would be looked at instead of just the actions of doing something with nothing. You know, that's another thing that uh, we've kind of taught ourselves is to follow instructions but have nowhere for them and you know spatially like you know from this distance to this distance you know it seems that we just follow really you know, like not really defined areas in order to speak and it's just because it's probably the first thing that came out that you know was not really thought of probably just caused by external things you know or just something that is not there literally um, and then um, Yeah, I guess I went over that. It's just how uncomfortable, you know, that mouth and head looks, you know. And, um, and then we have here, you know, um, intent. And this is just, I felt like going a different direction with it, but I could have gone the same direction, I guess. Um, and here we have, you know, how something in an area can, um, you know, go around in different places. In fact, you know, when you look at math and things like that, it may have to do with something else completely. You know, when you think that, uh, you know, drawing or anything like that, you know, that mathematics and numbers actually has to do with learning and, you know, with actual counting and stuff. It probably does not. Um, we'd have to be able to realize that there's a lot of other things. And it's just the fact that... Um, you know, um, there's other ways things are done, and there's just so many of them, you know, that really something like this probably isn't going to be good enough, even though I tried it and tested it, it would probably be thought of as something else, and I wouldn't know what it is. And um, it's just that, you know, here, you know, we had the intent, and then we filled up you know, the hand ends empty, and then we fill it up with the intent here. You know, like we're saying, like, you know, the measuring of something, and then, you know, it's like Qigong or something. You know, here you have the measurement of something, you know, filling up, and then, you know, the arm is limp, and then it fills it up, and then it is full in, and then can then flex. You know, um, I thought it would still be useful and usable, since it's what I used before, but it's still, like, you can go further than that and not use it and do something else by just analyzing it and finding what that would be. But, um, I put how the numbers are here, and I have, you know, a little combination which works. And, um, here we have zero and one, because this is empty and has nothing. And then this has one. You also realize the zero is a hole when one goes in the hole. You know, and then they have all these binary, non-binary, gay, it's all this stuff that has nothing to do with anything that I've ever even thought of before. You know, zero, one, zero, zero. And see, these are parallels that have to be there in order to compare it, you know, which is kind of useful. And then one, one, and then one, zero, and then three and three, or just something there. But it could have had something to do with something else. But it's just that you have to have a constant of zero and zero to see what this nothing here and nothing here would be at the same time while you look at the zero and one, zero and one. And what while you look at the you know one and one. You know, one, one. That's how that would be. That's how that would be. You know, and see it needs all of those constants, you know, to fill in all of the space. So instead of it just being one metaphor which ties together something. You know, you're getting, you know, all of the ones alongside it, so every other possibility basically wedges in, so it has all of the, you know, spatial understanding, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, which is required in volume and mass and thought and, you know, inverse volume and exverse volume and just being able to find something where you realize that we are literally a planet, but we're literally like... You know, like, all we can do is, like, shrink and expand in one way until we figure out, you know, how to fix that. And that's with the little ham comfort zone, you know, where you're just in that one spot and can't do anything. How can you change it if you're in space and can only do one thing? 
you know, in and out, big and small. You know, what else can you do if you can't move at all? And I mean, is that really what we're using to speak? You know, I think it is because we're all using the same thing. <laughs> but I mean, I could literally say anything else. You know, I mean, if you literally learned everything, I mean, you could say, you know, that box of Naughty Buddies is yellow. You know, I know that, you know, I mean, where is that at? I mean, how do I change it, you know, to where you could just say anything's anything and it has to do with anything so something else will be done, I mean, no matter what it would be. What would you do then? What would you do then? What would I do then? And what would you do then, you know? And uh, use textures, sounds, scouting areas, volume, mass, exhaling, and exhaustion to talk. It's basically just using kind of like the prosodic unit, you know, where you fully let something out and then just kind of let it relax. You know, and it has to be a full measurement and not just a little bit. And then we have the fact that, you know, when you, um, I do a lot of this with myself and everyone does, you know, that my eyes are fully shut, but then I just open my eyes a little bit. It's like I, I sneak and can still open my eyes and look around with my eyes shut. You know, and I think it's just kind of annoying. And uh, I don't know what else to put. But I guess that wouldn't get you started. Sorry. You know, my car broke down before. You know, and another thing to probably get rid of is just the cinematics of speech and how, you know, people say the exact same thing over and over a piece of paper. And, um, you know, it gets annoying and, you know, just to base everything on, I went to the store, I went to this, I did this, and now, you know, I said, I did this, so now I'm going to come back, and now I'm going to go and do this now, do the gaga, you know. And, you know, just the way it was taught in school, you know, Jimmy went to the store and then Jimmy went home and then Jimmy, you know, looked at the mailbox and grabbed <laughs> something out of the mailbox and checked what the envelope was. You know, just things like that, I just don't think would really help. And, you know, since I'm making a video, I'm probably just making it <laughs> just so you won't be able to make it. And so you won't be able to, you know, come up with a way to make linguistics, you know, because you should be able to. And um, I just wish that was another language and I don't like these keyboards. I already have an idea. And it's basically based on just that math where, you know, I have zero and zero and one and one and zero and one. And how they all kind of change and, you know, how you know, binary and non-binary with sex, you know, studying that and how it's completely in the way of everything and sexuality makes no sense at all and looks like just some poop. And um, basically just how, you know, annoying it is. And uh, I think it's possible, you know, just using the layering of data, you know, just to kind of string things together. Using all of those principles um, you would have a very, very solid, good language, you know, and I think it would be good enough to be the exact language that we would be saying when we are kids, using the distances and proportions to everything, everything, you know, not just using the example itself, but the example itself on everything else as well, you know, it's very important, and I think it can't be done, and I, I just don't think it's good enough.